We're going to get started here in just a moment. Hopefully everybody's um, getting the link and uh, ending up in this uh, page here to watch this webinar on how to create tracks in Ableton Live. So excited about this. Uh, I'm going to be starting here and uh, I'm going to be just walking through week to week on the sessions of entering in instrument by instrument using Ableton Live uh, to see how we can make tracks and use them in our services, use them in a uh, uh, studio setting use them for rehearsals, uh, for sale, whatever uh, that may be for you and what that would look like for you. And so in order to do that, uh, we're just going to jump right in. As you come in the window here, <coughs> excuse me, some of you might already be entering, uh, go ahead and type in maybe where you're from and what it is that you do, whether you're a worship leader or you're just a musician, and then we'll, um, we'll jump right in here and get started and uh, show you all the amazing things Ableton has to offer. Thanks. Okay, everybody, I see a few more people coming in, um, and I'm sure the others will come in as we're uh, getting started. Uh, and all the registered attendees uh, that got this link, uh, just a reminder that um, all of you will be able to uh, go back and review this video and uh, watch it over and over again to get any tips or tricks. And you can always email us um, over at loopcommunity.com, give us a call. And uh, we'll give you a little bit more information at the end of today's session. So as more people are coming in and joining, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, here you'll see uh, Ableton Live here in the window. You have, um, you know, you're just, we're in arrangement view. So um, most of you may be used to seeing this view, which is called session view. Uh, we're not going to be working in session view today. We're going to be working in arrangement view because we are arranging uh, the songs. And so what I have here uh, dragged in, this is just one audio track. Um, I chose to work on a song that most people would probably all know, which is Cornerstone by Hillsong. And so uh, right here what I have is an acoustic track that um, is just the acoustic guitar. And so uh, what I did was uh, I this is a track that I've already had uh, previous to this and that I'll just drug into Ableton so that we can preview this and get a good idea of what this kind of sounds like and what it looks like in Ableton. So what the first thing I'm going to do after I've drugged this in is we need to um, make, you know, click and cues files if uh, that's going to help you with timing. And we need to make sure that it's in line with the timing because if we don't, then uh, nobody else that plays the song or listens to the song is going to know uh, what's going on or what's happening. So um, just to give you a basic understanding and to save some time, I uh, already have these uh, dropped into a folder on my desktop. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these in, but I'm also going to show you like how you would get the cues and click built into Ableton. So first thing, uh, I'm going to drag in this file. This is a cues file here. And there's all the cues, and this is for the song that's been uh, pre-created before we start it, just, just to save time. And here's our click track. We're going to drop that in. So now we have all of our files. Uh, they're all lining up here. Uh, so basically how I would uh, get this started is um, you can get our uh, band cues uh, from loopcommunity.com. And I'm going to go there now. So here is loopcommunity.com. You'll be able to see that, and you can see uh, this is just after I logged in. Here's my account. Uh, if you go to store here in the upper corner, you can click on store, and we offer a free uh, band cue pack. You see it's right here. It's the very first thing in the store. You just click on that and download that, and then you'll get a um, file that you can use to load those into Ableton Live. 
And so I'm not going to do that now because obviously I've saved it already. We have those, I have those saved to my computer. And what you're going to do is you're going to just uh, Im drag and drop those into your browser here. Um, and I have them in different sections. I have a couple of computers that do this. And so I have uh, different things that I have for different reasons on my computers that I record with or computers that I create music with. So I believe I have them here in the drums section. You can put them wherever you want, but when you get that, you just drag them and drop them in here, and it'll label them. So the first thing that you're going to do when creating a track, again, these are already pre-created, so we're going to save some time. But what you would do is I have the English cue back here that I downloaded from Loop Community. I'm just going to drag and drop that right in um, this window here. And it's going to bring up this rack and it already has all of the things already prescribed here. Instrumental. So you can hear. Outro. There's the outro. Verse 2. Verse. Tag. Tag. So they're all listed here. Uh, and you can just go through those and list them. The biggest mistake people make is that they don't save this right from the bat. So when you drag it into Ableton, you'll have it here uh, in your browser window. And then what you're going to do is there's a little save button right here. And you're going to click that save button. And it's going to give you this cue pack here and you're going to rename it whatever you want and then it's forever saved to your browser you'll be able to use it anytime and just drag and drop them in so once your cues are set here you can uh, like rename them to you know cues or whatever it is that you want um, and you can start dropping them in so once I play this I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can actually see the marker numbers one thing that's really important is uh, for you to set the BPM so in this song, I have the BPM set. This is typical uh, 72, so I'm going to go up here and type 72 in here. And then you'll see that all the music and the click and everything have snapped to the grid. Everything lines up, uh, and it sound, and it looks good. Um, and then instead of using a 4-4 four, four timing, it's going to give you... So here's the first measure, 1, 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.42. So each point is a beat, is a quarter note. So instead of having that, I'm going to switch it to 1. And what that's doing is I want Ableton to show me uh, each number represents one quarter note value at the BPM of 72. So each one of these little um, values from 1 to 2 is a quarter note, 2 to 3 is a quarter note, and that's going to give me beats, and that's what I want because beat 5, I'm going to have intro, 2, 3, 4, and then the music starts. So when you're doing this, you can actually uh, highlight the first little bit of this new track that you made from the band cues um, and then you can actually insert um, this little MIDI clip here you can right click and hit insert MIDI clip and if you double click on this new click it's gonna uh, the new clip it's gonna bring up your list of all the different cues and you can again hit that little speaker icon here make sure it's blue and you can listen half time to what these are kick it in band and now it's like brings up a piano note base of what this is I'm going to fix this grid to show me quarter notes only. Okay, so there it is. And when I'm um, going here, the very first thing I want to do is click intro. Intro. And make sure I'm getting counted off correctly. Two. And I'm just double clicking here. Three. To add these in. Four. So there are your four. And if you play it this back, this is what it sounds like. Intro. Two. Three. Four. So there's your intro, and you can drag this clip here to make sure that it lines up uh, with the clip you have here, and then the music will start. So let's take a listen to that and see what it sounds like. Intro, two, three, four. So there's our music. You can actually, uh, if it's too light and you can't hear it, just double click on this audio track here. And I'm going <laughs> to, that's huge, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Um, in order to get this a little larger so you can hear the audio, maybe it's too quiet, you can either turn the volume up here in the track itself, or if you double uh, double click this clip, you can actually come down and just do like, um, scroll the arrow or even type in a number like 2, or like if I type in 10, you'll notice that this is going to really grow. So I'm going to type in 10, hit enter. And now it's like, whoa, it's too loud. So, you know, you can adjust this to listen and get your... Um, you know, sound good so that you can drop in your cues where you want them. I don't want to spend too much time on this, uh, so I'm going to maybe bump this up to like three or four. If it's too loud or something, I do apologize. 
um, but I think that's a good volume set. So what you'll do is you can copy and paste these. So Command C and then drop them in where your sections will be added. Again, these two files are already pre-made. I'm just using this to show you how you get the cues in there and start naming them. And then if this is not the intro, it's a verse or something, uh, you'll come down here and actually change, uh, double click on it again intro. to erase it and then put the verse in there verse or whatever. You can also hit this little pencil button up here and like just click one time to draw in the notes. So that's how you would do your cues and then the click would work the same way. You would just, um, you would just drag this in and it's going to bring up that, um, same, um, drum rack again with all these filled in you'll just highlight uh, the first four beats and then you can right click insert midi clip double click on that midi clip and then uh, bring this up and if it's 72 I'm gonna want the drummer to have the extra eighth note value so instead of a grid of a quarter note per beat I'm gonna have eighth notes per every beat so there's two eighth notes there's one beat two beats three and four so now what I have is Every click, I'm going to draw these notes in on every other beat. And you just draw these in. And here's what it sounds like. I'm going to turn this off so you can actually hear it. Now I have the eighth note. Intro. And two, it stopped calling the three, click because there's no four. more click data here. So, in order to fix that, what you can do is zoom out have the brackets up, click it, and drag all the way down the song, and it's going to put your click right in there. And there you go. There's your click and your cues that you entered in. And that's how you would enter in your cues and your click um, with the MIDI clips and everything. So that's a pretty fast access there. I'm going to keep these others in here and just show you what they are. So this first one uh, here is our cues. So let's rename that and call it cues. Second one, we're going to call it click. And let's turn the click back on. Uh, you don't have to use this click to record. You can use the um, Ableton click if you wanted to. Um, and maybe you like the Ableton click. Maybe the Loop Community click is not a favorite of yours. But uh, if you wanted to turn this off and then turn the metronome on, obviously, you, most of you guys, some of you may or may not know your way around some of these parameters. So here's the click on Ableton. Uh, Intro. And to have the additional one, you just turn this to 8 instead of 4. And it'll give you the eighth note value. So I'm going to leave this at four though for us. And we're going to zoom in here. Just close the browser, zoom in. And this is our acoustic track. So I'm going to put this as um, like track acoustic. So I know that it's the track. And what I like to do when I'm creating these tracks is distinguish what is what is the source audio that I'm kind of listening to to create my acoustic or whatever instrument it is so what's the source audio and then what is my audio that I'm actually physically recording so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is click uh, here and I'm gonna re I'm gonna put this as a like a green or orange so let's do like red or something to let them know like hey this red is not the one you're using because all three of these are um, the original not the original files, but you know the source audio that you're pulling from to listen to, so that you can create a sound alike or something that you're going to. And again, you don't have to make this for creating worship tracks. You could be creating your own song or writing your own music or, you know, studio setting, uh, or you could be doing, um, you know, a cover version of a song. And this is kind of to show you a cover version because most of you guys would probably make tracks in your church or in your worship setting, or in uh, whatever setting you're doing to use these songs so that you could play them back. And so that's why I am showing you this uh, audio track here. So now that we have these, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, and I'm going to label these red as well. So everything's nice and matching. So now that I have uh, my uh, source tracks here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a new audio track. So you can either go to File uh, and then Create and then Insert your audio track. Or Ableton's really nice because you have this that shows you what the commands are. So I'm just going to hit Command T and it's going to create a new audio track. With these, I do the same thing. So I'm going to rename it like acoustic so that I know that it's mine. And then I like to create the color of like green or something to show that it's mine. This is like a great um, way to differentiate your tracks from, you know, what you're using 
and what's, uh, our, what the source audio is. So now that we have that, we need to know how to get the acoustic guitar into Ableton. And some say, well, how do you do that? Do you use the computer mic? Do I need to get a mic? What I'm using right now um, to actually speak to you with and record the guitar um, is a Shure mic. It's an SM57. It's pretty standard in the creation of music studio world. They use these SM57s to mic a number of things, whether it's electric guitar amps, acoustic guitars, different types of uh, you know sounds or different types of speakers that are being modeled or played through. And the reason they use these is, is because it's a great, uh, it's a good dynamic mic that really captures a good source of sound and it's not going to pick up a lot of outside noise. And so it's got a really good balance to it and it's going to pick up a lot of the guitar that's really great. So um, while doing that, um, that's the mic I'm using, an SM57 from Shure. Also, what I'm using is a USB interface, and I'm going to show you kind of what one looks like. So right here, I have um, a Sweetwater up here, and we have the Focusrite. This is a USB interface, um, and you does, it doesn't have to be this one, but this is like an idea of one that you could use to um, have connected to your computer to actually input the guitar into that mic input or like a quarter inch jack. It'll use an XLR or a quarter inch. And you can plug them in here. And the good thing about this one and others is that you can record two different instruments at the same time. Or you could record uh, the input. One could be an XLR cable that's attached to a microphone. And the other one, input two, could be a quarter inch cable that plugs directly into here and then the other end plugs directly into your acoustic guitar. And then you could have two inputs happening at the same time and it'll give you a, a greater frequency bound so it'll give you a better sound and you'll be able to mix that as well. So this is something like kind of what I'm using and then the, the back end of this obviously um, that most of these come with the USB cable right there and you'll just plug that from that input into your, um, into your computer USB cable. And the good thing about uh, Ableton is that uh, you're able to recognize um, you know those interfaces. You click on Live, go to Preferences, and go to um, the Audio tab. And then right here you'll have the Audio Input Device and the Output Device. And so um, the Input Device, I'm going to choose the uh, Audio Express here that I'm using, which is my interface. And the Output Device, I'm just uh, going to keep it the built-in uh, built output, which is my headphone jack coming through and is what we're hearing. Uh, one of the big things too when you're recording is uh, depending on the speed of your computer and the audio card that's in it MacBooks usually, this is what I'm using now is a MacBook and they usually have really great um, audio cards that are pretty decent um, There's there are better ones out there but this latency tab here, this latency box the buffer size, you want to turn that down a bit. The reason why is that your computer uh, has to process a lot of things and it uses RAM to do this and the lower the buffer size uh, the, the greater uh, response in latency that you're gonna have meaning uh, latency is if I kept this really high like 2048 if I strum the guitar right now it's gonna have like maybe a two second delay or like a second delay but if I put it down here at like 128 when I strum it's giving me almost real-time feedback and I you know so when I'm having the cues being called or something it's not gonna be late so we want to keep this low other than that, uh, everything else here is pretty standard, and so that's it. So you're going to X out of here, and now this, um, the, uh, now that I've had my settings, my uh, interface will record the acoustic guitar that I have plugged in. So right now, I'm not, I'm not miking the acoustic. I just have it plugged into my interface with a quarter-inch cable, and I'm going to turn this up just a little bit and strum a little bit. And you should be able to hear uh, this, um, the uh, acoustic guitar. Uh, if you can't, what we're going to do is turn uh, the monitoring in on so you can hear in real time. Sorry about that. Record, Ronch, my bad. So when we record here, and when we hit record up here, we're going to be able to capture it in live. So leave this off for monitoring and then turn the uh, arm the track so that um, you're going to be able to actually capture. One more thing before we get started is make sure that um, nothing you really need is quantized, but I always set this to 16th note. Quantization 
is a feature in Ableton, like many other DAWs, that allows you to, um, when things are snapped to a grid, it's going to line the track up with the timing. So, you know, if you don't have it quantized, it's going to record it in live time. But when you have it quantized, it'll actually line it up with the downbeats. And everything is going to be a lot more smooth, and you're not going to have to go and tweak the audio later on. Uh, and so that's what I do. And also I turn on this overdub here for recording because um, sometimes I'm going to mess up. And when I mess up, I got to go back. And when I go back, I want to be able to overdub and not have to delete over stuff that I've recorded. And I'll show you kind of what that means in a little bit because more than likely I'm going to mess up on this, which is totally fine. It's what recording is all about. So, um, one more thing, if you're recording that, if you have a source audio, it might be good for you to like type out or write out the chords. Um, you can find these from praisecharts.com or other, um, you know, online resources that allow you, that'll give you like a parameter of uh, what chords are being played for that song. And so you can know what chords are coming, uh, or you can just listen to the source audio track, which is here, and figure out, okay, what chords are they playing. So, a good thing to know about this is we're playing in C, uh, and I know that we're playing in C because the track says 72 beats per uh, minute, and then C. So, when I play this back, it's going to give me uh, the key of C. Intro, two, three, four... And I'm going to cut down the metronome a little bit. Cool. Verse 2, 3, 4. Now that is a acoustic that's been pre-recorded. So in order to get this acoustic, I'm uh, capoed on the 5th fret. And when I'm capoed on the 5th fret, I know we're playing a C chord, but I'm actually playing a G. So we're in that, and you have to listen to the click to record. So let's go ahead and record this. I'm going to listen to it one more time. When you record, you're going to do it by section. So you're going to record from intro to verse. Okay, so let's try that. Let's just play through this and see what we have. Intro, two, three, four. to the four chord here to the five verse two three chord. four my hope is built that's where we're at okay so that's our intro so when you're recording this it may be good to write these notes down or the write the chords down as you're going or uh, again if you have a chord sheet you can have that and know what the section is it's coming but you'll need a good uh, recording is always going to listen to the parts by section and you're going to record them section by section and break them down. It may take a while, but you'll be able to have them broken down and have quick access to go back and edit certain parts of the song instead of having to record the whole thing all over again. So we're going to uh, hit record and make sure it says 111, and you can do that by hitting stop twice. And then when you hit the record button, it's going to launch right off the bat, and then we're going to record uh, the acoustic. So here we go. Intro, two, three, four. Verse, two. Cool, and I know that I put the click back in there. I didn't turn that off, so what I will do is... Um, and again, this is a perfect example. If you mess up, just click on the clip, hit delete, start over again. Easy peasy. So turn this down and we'll record the acoustic. It might be a little hot for some people, so I'm going to turn that down just a bit. All right, let's try that again. Intro, two, three, four. Verse 
So I stopped right here on the um, part here. So you can see in my audio, there's the click actually, and you're hearing probably the click in your uh, monitors with the cues and with the um, with the acoustic all at the same time. And the reason is, is all that is filtering out through my output. And so when you record, you're not going to have the click and you're not going to have the cues being sounded in this track uh, because of the way that it's mic'd. So um, when you're recording that, you'll, you'll only see the acoustic. So now that you have this first part recorded, you can go back to that and play it again and analyze, is it too soft? Is it too loud? Am I getting a good mix? And it's good for you to play back uh, as much as you can. It's kind of like, um, like in the, in the cooking world, in the chef's world, they say that uh, when you're cooking stuff, it's good for you to taste everything. And when you're in the musician's studio, like when you're trying to record and do your own music, it's good to listen back to everything before you do a solid recording of anything. You need to listen back to the levels of the guitar, the levels of the other tracks, and make sure that something is not overpowering the other. If it is, you just make your adjustments on your interface. Maybe you need to turn the input volume down on how hot, how hot the uh, acoustic is. Maybe turn the volume down before you try to record it again. And again, the great thing is, even after you get done with all this, if this channel of audio is too uh, is too loud or something, if you just double click to select this uh, audio, you can come down here and you know hit minus five or something, and it'll decrease. You know, so you can actually play with this a little bit. So uh, it's not the end of the world, but we we want to be able to get a true of a recording as possible. So uh, I know where uh, we're going with this. So now we have the uh, verse here, and I think this is the chorus. Verse two. Oh no, it's verse again. So I think it. Verse two. So they do my hope is built twice. So once you're done, if you need to trim audio at all, you can take the hover over the bar until you see those brackets, and then drag drag it back and chop the audio off right there, because we know that the verse starts here. Now, this overdub button that I was talking about earlier is great. And the reason why it's great is that you can come here uh, to your verse. So I know, again, zooming in, I have four beats, 29, 30, 31, 32, and then on beat 33 is where my verse begins. So if I start here where it's highlighted and hit record, it's going to start recording from here, and I'm going to show you what happens. So I'm going to have my pick ready to strum the first chord of the bridge. Verse 2, 3, 4. So now the problem is, uh, I just stopped recording, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. The problem is, my verse audio cuts off here, and I mean my intro audio cuts off here, and my acoustic is here. So what do I do? If I drag it, then there's going to be this gap in audio. So it's like, oh no, what do I do? Well, in order to fix that, you just move the audio for the verse where it starts on that beat, and then you uh, drag the previous audio until it lines up and snaps to the grid. And so what happens is uh, it'll be a transition of kind of seamlessness from the intro to the verse. So when I hit here, verse two, three, four, right there. And so when you're playing that back, nobody's going to know uh, if you can get that just right. You can zoom in really big here and really uh, get this where you want it. And so that's the great thing about overdubbing is that it really helps doctor up a lot of things if you mess up and need to um, kind of punch in, punch out, or whatever. Um, so that's how that works. So now we have our verse section. We have, I mean, our, our intro section, our verse section. If you record for any reason to the end and you realize, oh man, this is the same section. If you're utilizing tracks and you're not actually recording a project per se, one of the best things you can do is just click on this file and then hit Command D to duplicate this. Uh, and it's going to duplicate the audio that was here is now duplicated here. And what you could do, since I know this is the verse section, I can drop this off and have the exact same audio play twice. And I've saved myself a lot of time and hassle of having to record this here all over again in the verse twice. 
Now, you may not want to do that. You may want to say, well, the audio that I recorded for the verse, I want it to be, you know, the acoustic to be a little more different here for the ver for the second verse, and, and that's fine. Um, it's totally up to you what you want to do, but that's kind of how uh, you can get that. Now, some of you may say, well, he's recording in mono and not stereo, so how do we get uh, audio recorded in stereo? So let's say I'm recording and the first input is a microphone. The second input is uh, directly plugged into my acoustic. The way you would do that is you'd go over here to the input channel and then you would choose uh, instead of one or two, you would choose one, two. So now I have two uh, different inputs. There's one, which is the left channel, and two, which is the right channel. And so if I were to record, I'm going to delete this verse here. Let's say I'm going to play the verse again. You're going to see, instead of one line, you'll see two lines. And the one of the lines will be the left channel, one of the lines will, be, uh, lines will be the right channel, and it's pulling those sources of audio from two different inputs, which one is the microphone, as I said, the other is directly input into my guitar. So let's try that and see what it looks like. Verse 2, 3, 4. Cool. So that's just a little bit of the verse. Um, and I know this click is has to be killing people's ears. I'm sorry about that if it is. It's pretty high in the mix here. So um, we're going to turn down these just a bit. And so that's kind of the, um, that's where you're going to get this audio. So actually what's happening is the audio from this uh, channel, which should be my, um, I can't remember if this is the left or right here. I think this top channel is the left. Uh, channel and the bottom channel is the right channel and that's how your audio is now in stereo and you can have two different methods so if I if I panned this here's the panning button if I pan this all the way to the left it's really only getting the audio from this channel now but it's only going to be in your left speaker If I pan this all the way to the right it's only going to take the audio from here and what's cool about that is it, you can really get some great sounds out of your guitar um, and different types of blends to get a better mix. The microphone that you're using to put right uh, at the sound hole of the guitar, maybe a little bit in between that 12th fret and the sound hole will give you a deeper, richer part of the guitar, while the uh, direct in will give you more of a treble. It's going to give you more of your highs and a little bit of your mids. And when you put those two together on a stereo uh, recording like this by using one and two, both channels, uh, you're going to get a better guitar sound overall and a better blend. Now, uh, to talk a little more about this, um, we'll say like, well, I've, I'm doing this, I got a good mix in my guitar or whatever. Uh, the problem with this is I want to be able to add some effects. So let's do that. So if you click on this browser drop down menu here, it's going to give you all of your, uh, it's going to open up the browser pane and you're going to have these categories here. Being that we are using a live audio track and not a MIDI track, we want to actually do audio effects and not MIDI, uh, MIDI effects. Now, I'm using uh, Ableton Live 9 Suite. You can use Ableton Live 9 Intro. Uh, the difference is you're only going to be able to have, um, I think it's 16 uh, inch, up to 16 instruments on one project, which is maybe enough and you can only have four outputs I think um, for your audio which is plenty for what you guys are probably going to be doing but if you're going to be doing some serious heavy music creation you might want to think about purchasing standard Ableton Live 9 standard or Ableton Live 9 suite really the difference is it gives you unlimited number of tracks that you can record and it also gives you pretty much an unlimited number of outputs I think it's like 256 or something and there's like no way you're going to use all, all those but um, what it does come with in standard and suite that uh, intro will not give you is there are going to be a lot more uh, effects, a lot more plugins that come standard with suite. I'm not going to use any of those today. All the ones I'm using will be available to you uh, in intro. So it doesn't require a lot of um, a lot of things that you'll need for uh, recording acoustic. Acoustic doesn't really need a whole lot. To be honest with you, it doesn't need a whole lot of effects added to it. If you're using a good microphone and you're plugged in uh, and using a good interface, 
it's going to capture the acoustic sound pretty well. But some of the things you can use um, are this uh, first thing I'm going to do is put a tuner here. Because if you don't have a tuner already and you need one, you can just drag and drop that right in uh, to the channel. And here is your effects chain. Think of this as like a pedal board down here. And you're going to have from left to right how these uh, effects are. So the first one is a tuner. Uh, in order to get that, what you'll need to do is you'll need to cut monitoring in on. And then when you cut monitoring in on, you'll be able to play in it uh, string by string. And it'll give you a meter here that will show you if it's too flat or if it's too sharp. And you can use that. So, again, you don't have to use this tuner. If you have a tuner, that's fine. But there's a, there's a tuner uh, plug-in that most people don't know about. So, uh, after that, I probably will do a, uh, a compressor. So in order to, if you click these, some of these you'll have, some of these you might not. And so to kind of go around this and, and get out of this, I'm going to put just click the compressor and drag it right onto the acoustic guitar. And it's going to give me a compressor plug-in that's right down here. Now, this can be a very awesome tool, but can, it can also be a very dangerous tool. Uh, this 100% wet-dry, you'll need to probably turn this down to about, just try it on 50 and make sure it's at RMS as well. Uh, and what this does is it's going to actually compress the sound. So when audio is recorded, uh, anything over a certain amount, uh, a certain threshold will be compressed. It's going to kind of uh, bring the sound of the guitar up. The total volume will be a little bit louder. And if you need it to be louder, you can take the output and drag it up, and it will actually boost the sound of the guitar audio that you've recorded. You can also bring the threshold of what's this, the audio that's actually being passed through uh, the gate here uh, to be um, more limited, and then you can boost the output here. So if you have a guitar that maybe the XLR cable is not that great or the, um, you have a lot of kind of noise in your studio, uh, you can eliminate some of that by using a compressor to get that noise out. Uh, and I don't want this to get too complicated. Most of you don't really even need to use a compressor, but if you wanted to experience and try th to use this to brighten the sound or to get more depth there, uh, you can certainly use it. Uh, the last thing that I like to use uh, is this chain called EQ8. What I do uh, is I drop this down, and it gives me four different options here, and I'll choose instruments, and then acoustic guitar EQ1, and I will drag and drop this in. If you're not seeing any of these and you have intro, it it might mean because you have intro that you don't have some of these, uh, and you may need to upgrade. And uh, if that's the case, again, most of these you don't. It's not going to make a huge, huge difference. But if you are going to be doing some serious recording, you may need that. So I'm going to drag uh, and drop this in as well. So now I have a tuner that's going into my compressor, that's going into my uh, equalizer, and you you want to put your compressor before your equalizer because the equalizer is going to equalize the compressed sound not the other way around so this equalizer um, you have your low and mid and your high here it's a three band what they call a three band equalizer you can boost this up a little bit if you want to increase the low end same thing with your mid um, but usually when you drag this in if, if you need any changes or whatever uh, you know you can always just drag a fresh one in delete this one or whatever and this is your high how they drag these in is pretty good. You can bump this up just a little bit to give you a little more low end. And those are like the effects that I like to use with my acoustic. And so this, it's kind of pretty cool to have some of this uh, ready uh, to drop in and play around with it. Again, there are some, there are so many of these. You can put a delay in there and add a very tiny, a little bit of delay to add a little bit more punch to the uh, guitar and kind of it cuts to the mix a little more. Uh, but um, don't be overwhelmed that you have to use these things because none of these things are mandatory for you to record the acoustic. They're just optional to get a little bit better sound or to cut through the mix. And so uh, kind of what you'll do is you'll, you'll go through the song um, from, P, from Q to Q. And again, when you record, you're not going to have the cues being heard. You're not going to have the click track uh, in there. You're just going to have the audio away from the guitar. And you're going to record from section to section. And if you want to uh, kind of chop up the audio at any part and re-record, like, for example, if I wanted to come to the middle of this verse, I'm going to click right here, and you can see that little uh, cursor. I can hit Command-E, or Control-E if you're using Windows, and it will slice the track 
into two. So now I have one track here, one track here. I could delete this part, or I could, you know, change the audio of this track, or if I double click on it, it's going to break it down here uh, in the browser pane here, the sample of what it, I'm actually sampling here, the preview of the audio. And I can um, move these around to create the best uh the best audio for this guitar and line it up right to the grid so if i zoom in here in this sample see how even though it's warped uh, see how some of these markers don't line up they're a little bit to the right of each number and what that tells me probably that happened is when i was strumming that latency was still a little too high and the easiest way to fix that is uh, you can either do two things. You can come zoom in, and 49 should have the uh, strum right on 49. So you may want to move it over or something a little bit and drop it, and then that'll put it uh, line right up with the beat. Or what you could do is leave it right where you have it. And if you click on this audio source and zoom in, uh, you'll be able to actually drop in these little markers called transients so if I double click on this it's gonna give me a transient in there and I can use this to drag the audio over uh, left or right and kind of play around with this uh, if there's ever something that you do to that you mess up just hit uh, command Z or control Z uh, to undo what you've done and um, this what this does is that when you drop in these little transient markers so like I'm gonna do one here one here one here one here and one here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to line these up to the um, to the to the grid as best I can and what it's doing is anytime that I strum or any of that it's gonna it's gonna really give me um, an almost perfect guitar sound in the t in time and you can always you know play this and listen to it to see if it is but um, when you drop these in it's gonna really uh, make your guitar sound like it's in time and nothing's gonna be out of time and the reason that's important is when you're playing back a song or if someone else you know buys it and uses it or whatever if you're just you know rec recording a CD or an album or something like that and you're in the studio and you're doing this <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many people have done a track or played a song and the click is going and for some reason the acoustic or the drums or the electric or whatever is not in time with the metronome and in order to fix that you can always doctor up and mix this a little bit to where all of the uh, audio is lining up to your beats and that's very important because if it's not you know it's gonna be out of time it's gonna sound terrible and it's just gonna really be annoying for you and for other people so uh, it's gonna take some time <laughs> but I promise you that it's worth it if you'll just go through here and click on one section at a time and make sure that uh, the audio is actually lining up to a grid by double clicking and dragging these little transients over so that everything is right on the beat and then again as always once you're done with one section go back and play that section over again to make sure that uh, it's in time and nothing is you know standing out or nothing's wrong uh, and that'll give you a great um, a feedback on what needs to be changed on your track uh, to save some time you know we're not going to record the entire rest of the song but that is how you would do this let's say that um, you rec finish recording all of it right and you're finished with your track and then it's like well now what what do I what do I do um, how am I gonna how am I gonna you know get this audio out of here and how do I mix it and that sort of thing well the mi the mixing part of the audio needs to take place kind of how I was just saying when you put your effects there like if you put reverb or something and you put um, and you chop up the audio to try to get the timing of it correct um, once you have it all mixed and stuff and the levels you need to listen back to the entire uh, chain to the entire track rather and see if your audio levels are good if they aren't good then what that means is you're gonna have to come back and record the sections that need to be re-recorded or you're gonna have to go through it individually click on those sections come down here and maybe like just crop out this bit of audio or change the volume on this little bit of audio or line up the sections for rhythmic purposes or you know whatever it may be because 
it's either that section's going to be louder than than other sections or that section's not going to be in time like the other sections are and when you kind of patch those things up and have your final mix what you may want to do um, is combine them you don't have to it doesn't really matter um, but if you're like me and you want to kind of have consistency you can uh, select everything and if you want one full um, thing of audio uh, you can select everything and then uh, consolidate them or uh, command or control J and it's going to take some time but it, it's what's going to do is take these four sections and it's going to combine them into one audio track so this is going to be one track of audio and if you don't want that again you can uh, select this and chop it up again anywhere you want and it'll be ready to go so really utilize this when you're recording because um, you're going to need this take as much time on it as you want um, when I'm finished with this and I know that my levels are set I know that my levels are mixed properly uh, what I want to do is um, then add any effects that I needed to add so if I wanted to add some reverb that it wasn't already on there say this really needs some reverb go ahead and add the reverb here make sure it's in the right uh, place after the equalize the equalizer and then just you know turn this down fix it wherever you want it then uh, once you finally added the rest of your effects what you're going to do is bounce these out so uh, let's say that this is your cues track your click your acoustic um, and um, make sure that all of them are on they're engaged I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna do this track because we already have it so um, let's just highlight these three the click the cues and the acoustic uh, or maybe it's just the acoustic because these are the, from the original source maybe you've created your own click and your own cues you're gonna go up here to file and then you're gonna export the audio and the video now when exporting audio and video I'm gonna tell you um, some very important things that probably you may not know or, or it may be um, that you've been doing it wrong or that nobody's really taught you or showed you what the difference is between these so um, what I like to do is either select the track uh, the track that I'm going to um, export out or you can select all of them um, all individual tracks you don't want to select master because what master is going to do it's going to export all four of these in one track and it's going to give you everything so that's going to be crazy so you want to make sure you select the right one so let's just choose just the acoustic okay and render start is uh, the time that it's going to start exporting which is 111 the beginning of the song to the end of the song which is the 508th beat uh, the file type that we want is a wave um, you can tr make sure this is off. Most of this stuff is preset. The sample rate doesn't need to be any higher than 44.1. It's pretty um, standard for us when we're using tracks to just use 44.1. You're not going to need anything that's any higher than that. Uh, your files will get larger and uh, they're going to be a, a lot clearer but again they're, they're going to be uh, huge and it's going to take up a lot of space and the sound quality at 44.1 is, is perfect for what you're going to be needing to do. Uh, the bit depth, uh, 16, 24, 32. Some people like to do 24. If you do 24, it's going to be, a, and again, it's going to be a massive file. 16 is fine for what we're doing. Uh, you don't really need dithering on at all. Um, and make sure that your analysis file is off, normalizing is off, converting to mono is off. Uh, and it will tell you that it will be rendered at 44.1, which is what you want. Uh, and you can just do just as is. So when you're ready, uh, you click export and it's going to give you this box here so I obviously I have a few songs that I'm working on creating tracks for uh, myself and I'm just trying to create them and you know, listen to you know the song and recreate those acoustic parts or whatever it may be uh, you can have a very specific way to name these files uh, so let's do like this is cornerstone uh, and then you might want to put like underscore acoustic or something or you might do like we do and put the BPM and then you're going to put the key which is C and then you're going to put an underscore and then you're going to put the acoustic and this lets you know that this is the acoustic track for uh, this song and you're going to select where you want it hit save and it's going to take you through this rendering uh, audio process at 44.1 now 
if you do a full track where, okay, in this, I'm going to do acoustic, I'm going to do drums, I'm going to do bass, I'm going to do whatever, this rendering process is going to take a while because it's going to render a lot of different instruments, which is fine, but again, you may not need to uh, worry about that. So when I um, exported this, it exported as a wave uh, to the downloads folder. I'm going to actually drop, uh, drag this in to what we just recorded. So this is the file we just recorded and exported. And I'm going to drop that right here. And it's mirrored now. But it's going to take me to the very end of the song, obviously, where the 508th beat stops. And this is my audio. The only difference is with yours, you won't have click. You won't have cues uh, in the audio track, obviously. And you will you will have done the entire song. And guys, that's um, that's pretty much like most of the hard stuff for recording the acoustic guitar. Now, I know we didn't record a lot of actual audio because I want you guys to listen to this, uh, to listen to your source audio, wherever that may be. Uh, sometimes people, you know, they listen from videos or they listen to an MP3 on their phone and they, you have to listen to the what the guitar is doing or you have to listen to what the drums are doing. And again, I say and repeat this again and again, it may take you listening a, a bunch of times uh, in order for you to get that down pat, uh, what the part is doing. It may take you looking at lead sheets or tutorial videos to see uh, what can help. Um, but again, once you record this, making sure that all those parameters are right, the best thing that you can do is listen back to your audio sample. Make all the edits that you really need to make. And then once you're done with that, um, you can uh, export them out and have all your individual waves. Now, something cool that I want to talk about here uh, that's part of this is if you go to... Uh, loopcommunity.com and maybe you did know this maybe you didn't know this um, what you can do is you can actually make money <laughs> from the tracks that you create so if you go sign up for a free account loop community go to this upload button here click on upload uh, what I would love to see from these sessions and from these classes and again, the instruments that we do in the weeks to come are going to be a lot more in depth than the acoustic because the acoustic is very basic. When we get into some of these things like pads and keys and drums and stuff, I'm going to show you some of the plugins that I use. Uh, I'm going to show you how to record them uh, the best way and get uh, very precise sounding drums and keys and things of that nature. You can come here and uh, click on apply to be a seller. And uh, what you'll do is you can use this track that you build as an audition track. Uh, and what you'll do is, um, you know, you'll fill out the information uh, and, and follow the process of the instructions and upload your tracks. And once you're approved, you can actually start building songs and sell them on Loop Community. And people will purchase them and use them in their worship services or in their weekend services or what may have you. Um, but that's a great way. Uh, what you can also do is you can upload them to our cloud in Prime. And Prime is our free app that's uh, for the iPad, iPhone, and iPod. And uh, you can you don't have to sell them if you don't want to. You can just use them to play back. So uh, instead of you going out and purchasing a track for something, you can make your own track and use it uh, in your worship services. Isn't that cool? That's you know it just allows you a lot more freedom to um, be able to learn the software and use it beyond the realm of just playing back those tracks. But you're actually able to um, create your own tracks and use them. Now. Uh, one final thing here is um, when you're using some of these and you say, well, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do after I'm finished with this. It sounds okay. Uh, is it okay? Um, what do I do with the exports? And a tip that I would tell you is always save your session file here. Like don't delete anything that you record because one day or, f you know, for whatever reason, you may have to come back to this and make edits or make changes and something that you didn't hear or when you play it live it may sound a little bit differently than it did in your studio or something and you may need to come back and like edit this arrangement or edit something so what I think you should do is um, always 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 keep these uh, files here and make sure that you're um, make sure that you're always ready to um, go back to them and make edits if someone needs a change or your band needs a change or something if you delete these, I've done it before, and I'm telling you it's a pain because what I have to do then is I have to recreate all of this, and it's just, it's a mess. 
So always save your session files, maybe on an external hard drive or something where you can come back and edit these. Um, in the weeks to come, uh, I know next Monday we're going to be talking about, I think it's the bass guitar. And basically we're doing a five track, uh, five instrument session. So next, next Monday at the same time, we're going to be talking about the bass guitar and how to add that to this track here. So what I'm going to probably have is I'm going to have this, uh, I'm going to work on this this week so we can work on this together. Maybe this will be a project for you this week. You can record this from start to finish uh, on, from Cornerstone or whatever song you want. And I'm going to play through this track myself and record the acoustic all the way to the end. And so that way next week I can drag the recorded part of the acoustic in and then I'll be ready to start recording the bass. Right now it, it may be overwhelming because you think, well, I um, I can't really hear this coming together. You know what I mean? The acoustic sounds okay. I promise you by the time we like get to the drums, it's really going to start like being, like coming together and it's going to sound awesome. Uh, and when you f create your first track, it's only a building process. You're going to do this again and again and again and it's going to get better every time because you're going to be pros at navigating your way around this and using all these different types of effects that can make your sound better. So again, uh, some of you that weren't in the beginning of the video, um, one last time for uploading, uh, I also showed this um, Focusrite on Sweetwater. This is just an interface that you can use to get the guitar into this. We're going to use the same interface uh, next week to record the bass. So maybe you say between now and then I'm going to go out and buy an interface. Uh, this is a pretty reasonably priced one um, that you can get and use it for next week's session. Cool? So uh, right now in the time we have left, what I want to do is maybe go through and um, talk about the the last few remaining uh, sections uh, that we have in here uh, inside of um, inside of this Ableton session uh, so that we can record the acoustic. So I'm going to grab my acoustic here and let's go through and let me get in the right key first in the key of C. And I'm going to um, Turn this click back on so I can hear. And again, my click's going to come through, but maybe yours won't. So, what section is this? Chorus two, three, four. Cool. So, I'm going to record the chorus. Oops. Let me delete that. Cues on, click off. That would help. <laughs> Here we go. Chorus two. Three, four. The weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord. Turn around. Two, three, Lord four. Of all. Verse two, three, four. Cool. Uh, I'm going to record this again to show you what it sounds like with the microphone. So let's erase this, go back to the same spot, and I'm going to bend the microphone down and record it with the microphone from the interface. Chorus 2, 3, 4. Turn around, two, three, four. Verse, two, three, four. Cool, so that's um, a pretty good um, recording with the microphone in there. Maybe you could hear a little bit of a difference with the sound quality coming from the mic as opposed to just direct in from the cable. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, um, please send us an email, support at loopcommunity.com. Support at loopcommunity.com. You can also uh, give us a call at our support line, which is 312-566-7312. That's 312-LOOP-312. And we'll be happy to answer any questions about certain parameters in Ableton. 
what instrument uh, instrument what interface are we specifically using what was the name of the microphone again how did you route the audio if there are any specific questions you have about any of these things um, feel free to ask us uh, through phone or email uh, anyone that has this link you'll be able to view it uh, after the webinar is over uh, we will post this to our channel and if you have that link don't lose it um, uh, we'll be able to click on that and go right to the video watch it from start to finish and uh, in the time uh, from this week to next what we're gonna focus on next week is the bass guitar and keep building this track uh, adding on different effect effects for that and I'm going to show you what I'm using specifically and uh, we'll go from there. There will be more um, more angles with like what pedals I'm using, uh, what plugins I'm using and so be sure to tune in to that next week and uh, we'll learn how to build the bass track together and stack it on top of this acoustic track. Uh, it's going to be really fun. I'm excited to see where the track is going to end up uh, and We'd love to see a lot of uh, people that have their own tracks built start to apply to Loop Community and see if they can upload their own tracks or just to see if you can upload your tracks to Prime and use them. We'd love to hear them, see how you guys are doing and how you're liking um, this webinar and the material that we're teaching here. Um, if you have other DAWs like Logic or Pro Tools or something you want to use, feel free to use them. Uh, the interfaces and connections will work the same, but the, uh, the, the overall look is different so we want to really teach this in Ableton uh, that way you'll be able to build these tracks and then use them back in other the uh, session view for your worship services alright guys um, that's all for now we'll see you next week uh, support at loopcommunity.com if you have any questions and uh, we'll get those answered ASAP thanks for tuning in guys we'll see you next week